coming to the vascular lesions of the salivary glands see this case of a 3 months old female child the mother noticed a swelling on the left aspect of the neck bluish discoloration of the skin referred by the pediatrician for further evaluation see this clinical picture where we can see this bluish discoloration of the skin and when we did the imaging we saw that in the superficial subcutaneous soft tissues there was this ecogenic lesion as seen here and when we evaluated it with doppler we see that this lesion showed vascularity and the spectral evaluation showed that it typically showed a low grade venous flow and that is classically suggestive of a low grade venous malformation so uh, vascular malformations are the congenital lesions which are there since birth and they could be classified into capillary lymphatic arterial venous and depending upon its clinical picture and ultrasound findings you can make a diagnosis of a low grade venous malformation also see this case of a female child with swelling along the right parotid region so when we evaluated this case the submandibular glands on the right and left are completely normal the left parotid gland is normal but look at this right parotid gland it shows some inhomogeneous appearance with some anechoic area seen within and see this video you realize that there are multiple hyperechoic fossa which shadowing seen within this gland architecture which is distorted and this are classically nothing but phlebolites and whenever you see phlebolites within this lesion always always think in terms of hemangiomas so hemangiomas are also could be two types depending upon uh, the way they could be capillary or cavernous and these cavernous hemangiomas are seen more commonly in the older children now uh, ultrasound and doppler can really evaluate vascular lesions in a very good way and you can make confident diagnosis of a hemangioma or venous malformation on ultrasound now depending upon the pattern of flow they could be low flow types or high flow types then see this case of a 4 months old female child with a history of rapidly increasing swelling along the right parotid region in fact this uh, mother said that this there was a small swelling and now this has suddenly increased in size so when we evaluated this gland you could see that the left parotid gland was completely normal but look at this right parotid gland it is enlarged in homogeneous in echo texture you can appreciate this when we evaluated it with doppler it showed a chaotic vascular pattern all within the gland and mind you whenever you have such a kind of history the first diagnosis you should think in terms of a parotid hemangio endothelioma so uh, it's one of the most common parotid tumor of the childhood and whenever you have this history of a any rapidly large growing mass in an infant in a parotid first diagnosis which should run in your mind is a parotid hemangio endothelioma the more case which we saw uh, of a 7 year old female child with history of swelling along inferior to the angle of mandible now clinically this lesion was compressible and soft and hence when we started imaging we saw that along the an angle of the mandible there was this thin homogeneous appearing lesion with few anechoic areas within it when we started evaluating with doppler we could get both a red and blue signal seen within it and when we deeply evaluated this lesion we saw that it typically had a branching pattern it showed arterial and venous both flow in fact uh, you could see that a large draining vein we could appreciate in this lesion we saw this uh, lesion on spectral evaluation we could see that the veins have got completely arterialized and show a high flow of almost 200 meters per second whenever you have an arterial venous mixed signals with veins being arterialized and a draining vein seen this is nothing but an avian now in fact in this case when we did literature search we found that submandibular avians are quite rare but parotid avians are very commonly seen in uh, pediatric age group in the parotid gland in fact uh, we, with med search i found that there were 
uh, only eight cases of submandible avian reported to the date, and maybe this is the ninth one. So, uh, coming to the end of the discussion, one can confidently say uh, that with history, uh, age group known of the patient, and also uh, looking at these patterns, the way these lesions present, and always bearing in mind what's the age and the history. In many cases of parotid and submandibular glands, you can make confident evaluation of the lesion and give one diagnosis. Thank you.